Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and on today's DIY Wednesday video, we're actually going to do a DIY and I am going to install a barn door so you don't have to. Now, full disclosure, in this house, I want to install two barn doors. One in the master bathroom because this house is old, man. I think it was built in like 1954. From the bedroom to the bathroom, there is an actual door. However, when you open the door, it hits the toilet. It only opens to like a 90 degree angle. It doesn't open any further than that because it hits the toilet. So I instantly removed that door and now it's just a gaping opening. And so I wanted to put a barn door there. I figured the house only has one other guest bathroom. Maybe I have three people and two of them need to go to the bathroom at once. Instead of closing my bedroom door and then going to the bathroom, they can just close the normal bathroom door. So I wanted to put a barn door there. The other area I wanted to put a barn door was from the kitchen to the pantry, pantry slash laundry room. It was one of these doors. When you opened it, it is a tiny space and it just took up too much room opening into the pantry laundry room area. So I removed that door and thought, oh, I'll put a barn door there too. And now why I say I'm installing a barn door so you don't have to, because full disclosure, I already installed one barn door and it was a fucking shit show. So I bought this lovely barn door kit. I bought two of them. They're not terribly expensive. I wanna say they were like $88 each. Now this does not come with the door. It is just the hardware, like the track, the shit that mounts the track to the wall, and then like the brackets that you put on the door. You know me, I'm in the mindset of reuse, repurpose, or recycle. And since I took down actual doors, I figured, why can't I just use the actual door as the barn door? And so that's what I did. I actually like used the door that I took off of the pantry for the door for my bedroom because the house also has a pocket door from the entryway to the kitchen that is in the most pristine condition. It is the most beautiful door. I don't think anybody that's ever owned this house has closed this pocket door because it is so beautiful. So I want to remove the pocket door and use this door for the barn door from the kitchen to the pantry. Point of the story. I wanted to install one barn door first just to make it seem like I knew a little bit about what I was doing. I know that's not usually my MO. We fly by the seat of our pants here on This Is Real Life and we just do the DIY like we know what we're fucking doing even though we don't. However, in this case, I was like, well, I have two barn tours to install. I might as well install one, get the gist, and then I can make the DIY video a more tutorial type video as if I actually know what I'm doing. So that's what I did. I installed the barn door in the master bathroom area first and I learned a lot. And let me just tell you, if I was actually recording the video doing that door, channel done over. I was almost in tears several times. It took me all day all day a thing that should have taken like maybe two hours took all day just because of weird directions maybe not understanding the directions maybe the maker of this barn door hardware putting step number seven in the number seven spot when really it should have been the number one a spot you know things like that poking holes in my drywall that then needed to be removed. And so then I have to repair those in order to put different molly bolts in, you know, that whole thing. But don't worry, I've got it together now. And I actually love the barn door in my master bathroom. So I can only assume I'm gonna love just as much the barn door going from the kitchen to the pantry. And I kind of feel like barn doors are super trendy and I, I hope they're not losing steam because they're a great solution. If you don't have a lot of space or a door that opens into a toilet, barn door, I'm telling you, is where it's at. 
even though I don't really even care. I was gonna say, I hope I'm not dating my house. Uh, you know, in 20 years, I'll look at that barn door and go, fuck, that was a big mistake. You know, like my hairstyle from sixth grade. But I don't care because it is great. It is a great space saving feature, super convenient. It adds a door to a place where you might not have been able to put a door that actually opens and you just wanna divide a space up. It's perfect. So that's what we're doing, I know. Very long intro. So we're gonna get into it, but first I gotta do a lot of prep work. Because I'm reuse, repurpose, recycle, I have to get this pocket door out of here first. I need to take off this molding here so that I could slide this out and then in my mind, it should come off just like a closet door would come off. Fingers crossed. You know, some things in my mind, they don't always go as planned. So we're gonna do some prep work first. If you're interested in how to hang a barn door, I can actually teach you because I've done it once already. So stay tuned. Okay, so after much trials and tribulations, I finally got the pocket door out. Now, I know from the angle you were looking at it, it probably doesn't look the most amazing. However, the other side, I'm looking at it right now, it's gorgeous. You'll see at the end, because I don't want to ruin it for you. The pattern on the wood is just beautiful. I don't know why one side varies so much from the other side, but this side that's going to be facing out, beautiful. Now that that's done, I am prepping the opening to where the barn door is actually going to go. If you have an area where you've removed a door to put in a barn door, you want to get rid of all of the wood molding trim around the opening as well as the piece of wood that like stops your door so you can close it. Remove that all from the inside so that everything is flush with the wall. And then once we have that prepped, then you can go ahead and hang your barn door. Now, if you have an opening like a hallway, a place where there was never a door to begin with, you don't have to do all this shit because it should be a seamless, smooth wall finish. But if you're taking down a door like I am, you gotta remove all this shit. It's pretty easy. I just use a hammer and like a little pry bar and it comes away. This house has eight thousand years of paint layers. So I do take a blade and I run the blade along so it kind of, you know, makes a, a cut in the paint layers so that I can get my little pry bar thing and hammer in between. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This is really the easiest part to be quite honest. Okay, so it's getting pretty dark and uh, I went a little crazy because you can see I've removed all the molding and then I took my little scraper and I was smoothing this out because I'm going to need to put spackle in the gaps here. Well, as I was smoothing it out, I noticed paint from the wall was peeling. So then I took this and scraped a little. Well, then it was coming off in huge sheets and so I literally, you can't tell because it was white already, but I have scraped this entire wall of its paint. Like here, here's a layer. And I know this is an old home, but I can only assume that this is because it looks like cement board and that maybe there was a paper layer, which could be this like pinky color, but then there's also years and years and years and layers and layers and layers of paint. So once I started peeling the paint, it started peeling this backing or the front or the paper or whatever. I needed to smooth out the wall and good thing, you know, I haven't done the kitchen yet, but my plan is to paint and wallpaper in here. So I did need a smooth wall whether I painted or I wallpapered. I just spent, I don't know how long with this little thing, just <laughs> scraping, scraping, scraping. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go get spackle and I'm gonna fill in all this area because eventually 
I do need to paint this. So I just need to get some spackle and smooth that gap out so that when I do end up painting, wallpapering, what have you, it's all smooth and even and looks pristine. The prepping is almost done. We're almost ready to hang the door. I, I know I made 10 times more work for myself, but you know when you get like a sunburn and you peel a little bit and then you have to peel a little bit more and then you have to peel a little bit more? Well, that was this entire wall. So that's what I did. But now I'm gonna spackle after I clean up this mess. Here's the mess I made for myself, yeah all the way up top. There were some areas that you can see right up near the molding where I couldn't get it all peeled off. I didn't wanna get onto this wall at all, so I kinda of stopped short here. But you can kinda of see where I could probably still peel that area up. But yeah, that's what I did. Instead of spackling that so that we could hang the damn door. Oopsie. I'm telling you, it was like a sunburn. I just had to keep going. Okay, so the prep work, totally done. I've spackled all around, I've scraped everything smooth, and now we are ready to install this bitch. So let's get the kit, unbox it, and get all our parts and pieces out, figure out what we need to do. So like I said, I bought this kit, I wanna say it was at the Home Depot for like 88 bucks. It's by Everbuilt. And ever build, pull out those directions and reorganize them. Because for this particular one, there are these stoppers that you actually have to slide on to the bar before you mount the bar. But they neglect to mention that. What I would suggest is with whatever kit that you buy, pull out all the parts and pieces, read the directions, make it make sense before you start installing. Because if you do have to use molly bolts in your wall, then you discover, oh shit, I need to slide those things on. Like for me in my bathroom area, I needed to install the bar all the way to the edge of the wall. I didn't have a lot of play back and forth. I had no room to slide. If Everbelt is just assuming that everybody has left themselves enough room to the right and left of the bar to slide those stoppers on, they're wrong. And once you put the molly bolts in and then you try to take everything out, the molly bolts just pull right out of the wall. And that's what happened to me. So don't make that mistake. We're not gonna make it here today and I don't want you to make it when you're doing it. So just be aware of the hardware pack that you purchase, read all the steps first, then go about it. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you. It's actually, once you get past like the, oh fuck, I did that wrong, it actually doesn't take that long to install. So in the kit, it just comes with the hardware, the door is not included. Now there are some kits that do include a door. I think it adds like $100 onto the price depending on the style of door that you choose. But for me, since I'm reuse, repurpose, recycle, I have a door. Let's just even say you took this door off and you're gonna hang this door that was here now as a barn door so you can slide it. The door in the space actually fits the space. So it's not gonna be wider than your space and it's not gonna be taller than your space. Your door basically is gonna be barely covering from edge to edge. And then as far as the height is concerned, you're gonna have a bigger gap at the bottom because the way you have to hang your door is up above. So imagine your door fits perfectly from inside to floor, but now you've got to take your door and mount it above. So that's gonna leave you a gap at the bottom, which doesn't bother me at all. It's not like I'm trying to, you know, eliminate airflow or anything like that. I don't give a shit if my gap at the bottom is one inch instead of a half an inch or whatever. Be aware of your door and where you need to hang it. And because I am recycling a door, that does not give me a lot of play at all. My bar has to be mounted very precisely to give just enough, because I don't want to lift my door so high that I have like a six inch gap from the floor to the bottom of the door. So I've got to be very meticulous in how I hang my door. Their directions do say like, hang your pole like five inches above your, I can't do that. I have to adjust based on the measurements of my 
door. So keep that in mind if you are recycling a door. Now, if you get a door, it's gonna be bigger than your hole. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that, but I do. So let's unbox all of our parts and pieces and get to hanging. I'm assuming that all barn door hardware is very similar from manufacturer to manufacturer. Basically what you're gonna get is your pole, it's not really a pole, but you get what I'm saying, your track. You're also going to get some spacers because your track's not gonna get mounted flush with the wall, otherwise your door's not gonna be able to slide. Then these are the brakes basically. So when you open your door, it doesn't fly off the end of the track. My stoppers actually slide. The pole slides through here. I have seen hardware where this little brake is actually screwed onto the top of the track. So if yours doesn't slide, you don't really have to worry about it. Mine slides. So I've gotta get these on here before I mount the track at all. So be aware of these little motherfuckers because they really threw off my game when I was installing my first barn door. Then you're gonna get all of your hardware and you're gonna get this little thing to mount to your floor. It's a track so that your door doesn't go like boom, 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 boom. This only works if your door is the right height above the floor. For my bathroom door, I didn't use this at all because it was just skimming the top of the track. It's not like, you know, a windstorm's coming through here and my door's like going like this. It's totally fine if you don't use this little track. But if you do, you have to make sure if you're recycling a door, you have to cut a groove in the bottom of your door so that the track slides in like a closet door. But point of the story is, you may or may not use this and I am not using it. So these are all great notes for you guys and I'm so glad I installed a barn door before doing this video because I did learn a lot. The barn door track, it's not forgiving, not in the least. You have to make sure you're completely level. If you are not level, when you close your barn door or open your barn door, if the track's even off the slightest, your barn door is just gonna roll open ever so slowly. Level, you gotta get yourself a level and make sure you're completely level when you mount that track. Everything about this installation hinges on this track. Now that you know that, we're gonna prepare our level lines, measure our door, and make sure we hang our track in the exact spot that it needs to be hung. So I have my door leaning against my area, and you can see it's on the floor right now, and I have a gap here. So I wanna make sure that I don't have a gap at the top, so I know that I need to mount my track high enough to where the door hangs so it just is barely on that edge. So I wanna hang my track right about here. You need to make sure, here are your little wheel tracks. They're gonna be mounted like this. So they're gonna sit on the track. If I have my track too high, my door's gonna be too high and then there's gonna be a huge gap at the bottom. If I have my track too low, the door is gonna hang too low and then there'll be a gap at the top. I need to try to split that difference. I'm gonna put the bottom of my track at the top of where I can see the wooden door frame. Now that's just me, again, because I am recycling a door. So I've gotta be very precise. You may be able to be a little bit more forgiving based on the door that you're using. Just know that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my level and I'm gonna draw a line. Remember when we went over the shit in the toolbox? A long level is very handy for something like this. I am gonna butt it all the way to the corner of my wall and the majority of the bar is gonna go that way. Good news is, is I kind of have this door frame as a reference point as far as levelness is concerned. There, it looks pretty good. So draw your line and then I'm gonna extend my level line out that way as well. Okay, because I am only one person and all of this hardware shit is not light, I wanna give myself an extra pair of hands. So I have this scrap wood from when I busted out the inside of the door frame. I'm literally just going to nail this right underneath my level line so that when I put my track up, it's being held in place so that I can draw where I need to put my drill holes, all that. 
You can do this if you're by yourself. Get yourself a piece of wood nailed in there. These tiny little nail holes aren't gonna make that big of a deal. We'll spack them up later. It's just gonna get, make it a lot easier for you so that when you are trying to hold your track up, you're not like trying to hold it here and then, you know, getting your pen out of your mouth and trying to drop. Put a piece of board up there to act as not only a guide, but an extra set of hands. Now that I have my little extra set of hands nailed in place, I do want to just set my level, make sure I did everything appropriately. Balls on low. Now we can put our track up and mark our drill holes. This track is pretty fucking heavy though, I will tell you that. And it's nice to have these little extra set of hands. My barn door can only open one way and it's that way. So I need to make sure I have enough track to where the door opens all the way. Door is 32 wide. I made my outside line at 33. So I know I have enough track now for my door to fully open. And now I can mark my holes. So there are four. One, two, three, four. I'm just gonna put my pen in there. Where's my level? I just, you can never be too careful. I literally just dropped my pen. Oh, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, I gotta get my pen. Oh, Jesus Christ, Sherry. Pen in hand. We're good over there. Everything's level. Marking my holes. And I, I full out color the whole entire hole in. All right. Now that we have our holes marked, we're gonna drill. In your directions, it should tell you what size drill bit to use when pre-drilling. Mine said a quarter inch drill bit, and I just so happen to have one. So I'm gonna pre-drill all my holes. From your pre-drilling, you should be able to tell if you've hit a stud or if you have not. Here and here, I feel like I did hit a stud. Here and here, no way, no how. Now, my kit only comes with two molly bolts. Why they didn't provide me with four? What if where I was hanging this track, I missed every single stud in my wall? Look at that too, because you may hit every single non-stud in your wall and you might require four molly bolts. Good news is I only require two. Next step, you're gonna wanna install any molly bolts that need to be installed before you start screwing your track onto your wall. So I know I need to get molly bolts in these two holes right here. So there's part of me that wants to put two here because I'm a little bit unsure. I felt tension, but I didn't feel like a stud's worth of tension. So I might put the two plastic molly bolts that came in the kit in these two holes, and then my two like super industrial metal molly bolts that did not come in the kit in these two holes. Because this door is fucking heavy, man. Better safe than sorry. Like I said, my kit came with these two white plastic molly bolts. They kind of aren't worth a shit, really, but I use them all the time. Now, for my other two molly bolts, I did go out and get these super industrial. These are actually for drywall, hollow wall, driller toggle molly bolts. The screws that they come with, not only are they not black and not only are they not hexagon, they're not long enough to trigger the toggle action once I have the spacer in. So I had to go and purchase additional bolty things that are hells of fucking long. Now they're silver and not black, so I'm gonna have to paint them, but at least they'll match because these ones literally look like a screw head. So it's just gonna depend on what your needs are, where you're installing your track, and what kind of molly bolts you're gonna be able to use if you need any at all. You might be lucky and hit studs everywhere and then you can skip this step, but I can't. So I gotta install my molly bolts. If you do end up getting different molly bolts, these ones are the ones that the Home Depot suggested and they seem to work really, really well for my bathroom one. What happens is, is you screw this screw in and when it hits a certain spot, it toggles this little metal piece. Pretend this is your drywall. As you screw tighter and tighter and tighter, it moves this metal piece up so that it sandwiches your drywall in between. Spacer is here. This goes here. Now you can see once I put the bolt that came with it 
in, there's not enough room to screw this to be able to move this in to tighten. Therefore, I had to get those long ones. Not a big deal. This, we're gonna screw into the hole that we made and then we'll be able to mount our plate. Our molly bolts are in and we're ready to mount our track onto the wall with our spacers. But before you do that, these little brakes, see how mine slide on the track? They're not mounted on top of the track. You wanna make sure you have these slid onto your track. This slider does not slide over the top of the bolt head. So you have to know, does your plate go behind the bolt head? See the bolt head right there? Or does it go in front of the bolt head? Because once this is on, you can't move this. So just, just double make sure. Cause you don't want to get this bitch hung and then have to take it down just to slide this piece on. There's two, one goes on each end. So know that. Now that we have these pieces on, we can get our spacers and our bolts and we can mount our track. Once our track's mounted, we just prep the door, boom, done. One fancy tool that you are going to need if your hardware comes with a bolt that is shaped like a hexagon and not a screw, you are gonna need a socket wrench and the right size socket bit to fit your little hexagon screw. It's like a not expensive, but if this is the only thing you're ever gonna need this thing for, maybe see if a friend has it and you could just borrow it because literally you're only using this to install four screws. Um, oh, maybe one of these, you could use this and it's like crr, 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 constantly like this, whereas this just goes chirk, 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 chirk. Way cheaper, shorter amount of time. But this is this one special tool you're gonna need in order to get this sort of a bolt into your wall. So you want your washer to be at the top of your bolt, like so. It's gonna slide into your spacer like this with the plate in between. Now, this is going to be a little bit more difficult to install as one human being, but we can do it. I am going to install the center. Basically, I'm gonna install middle out. That should work okay as a one person job. Grab my track, put my spacer where it needs to be, get this in here and then start cranking away. First bolt is in, it is not tightened all the way. It's just in there enough to hold everything in place. It was zero problem for me to hold this up and crank in the screw, not a problem at all. And because the track is so long, it is actually resting a little bit on our little helping hand board over there. Now I'm gonna install this one, then go here and here. It's gonna be super easy and we're almost done. Here is my spacer. Get my spacer lined up. Oh geez, there we go. Okay, I am on my last one. None of them are super tight yet. Once I get this last and final one in, I will go back through and make sure they're all super, 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 super tight. And then we can remove our little helping hands and then prep our door and hang. So yay, putting in my spacer. Now we just crank it away. We are in the home stretch. Track is up and super secure. The door is ready to go up so that I can get the right amount of space between the track and the door and that I don't have a gap between the top of my door frame and where I mount the door. I went out to the garage and I got some paint sticks. You could get cardboard, books, what have you, just so that you know where you want your door to fall from your track. It's not actually hanging off the floor as much as I thought it was going to. It's only hanging about two paint sticks thick off of the floor, which is nice. This is our little bracket. Now this mounts on your track like this. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure or measure where we want 
this first hole to go. Now the directions will tell you what they recommend. They'll say like at least an inch and a half down and two inches over. Well, two inches over to me looks too far out. I don't like the look of that aesthetically. I wanna go like at least like four or five inches in, I think, on either side. And then I know I'm coming down whatever this amount is because that's where I need my door to hang. This is where you wanna, again, be as precise as possible. You have two of these to mount. So you don't want one mounted here and then one mounted like crooked and up high or what have you. It's one of those situations where I know we're not used to on this channel, but we're gonna have to measure a million times and drill once. So one and three quarters and five and a quarter down. I want the center of my hole to hit at five inches. And I'm gonna mimic the same markings on the other side of the door for the other one. Get your measurements kind of where you want them. Then take your door down to the floor, lay it down. Get your little bracket, meticulously measure every single hole where everything needs to be. Make sure it's all lined up perfectly because once you have your marks, then you're gonna actually drill into your door. We don't wanna fuck up some drill holes in our door. So measure, measure, measure. We are on the floor. I know I want to come in five inches. So I'm gonna make a little mark. And then I know that my hole is going to come down one and three quarters for this center. And then, is it five and a quarter? Four my second hole there. So it's at four and a quarter here and four and a quarter there. So I know we are good. So I'm gonna go ahead and make bigger circles so that I know where to drill. Now, I just need to repeat this step on this side of the door. So because I'm being lazy and I don't wanna haul this door all the way out to the garage and put up saw horses, I'm literally leaning it up so that my drill holes are in my door frame and the drill won't go into my wall. So it's gonna tell you what size drill bit to use. I need a 3 8 inch drill bit for these holes here. There we go. Again, this is not the best practice for drilling straight and precise holes, but it's a good practice if you're lazy. So just be careful. You wanna make sure you're going in super, super straight with your drill. You only have one shot at this. I'm gonna go real slow. Feel real good about that. So now I just gotta drill the other two holes on the other side and we're good to go. So my people for my hardware included two sets to mount the hardware onto the door. One set is a little bit shorter and one set is a little bit longer. Based on the thickness of your door, use whichever one works. So because I am recycling a hollow core door, I'm using the shorter ones. And how I knew is I just lined them up with the edge and I was like, yeah, those work. The wheel is facing into the wall. Don't do the wheel facing out towards you. And you're gonna mount it like that. There's like a decorative like nut situation. Looks kind of like a nipple. You wanna make sure that the nipple is on the outside facing you and the flat portion of the screw is facing the back of the door. And then you're gonna undo this, take this washer off. You're gonna poke this through your hole and you might have to screw it to get it in there. So I'm gonna get my little Someone in my neighborhood is having a party because I can see out to the street through my window and cars are lining up. Ain't nobody invite me to a party. Neighbors, do my invitation get lost? I can't go to your party anyways. I'm trying to install a barn door, but thanks for the invite. Now, I'm gonna put in my top one too so that I'm not holding my heavy wheel bracket while I'm trying to screw in the top one. Just get it so that your bottom one and your top one are enough through so that when you put this on, all you have to do is hand tighten that little nut that it comes with or a nipple and then you'll be good to go. Now that I have both of the little bolt things in, I can take my bracket, make sure the wheel is facing the wall and I'm gonna slide that right on, slide the washer on and just hand tighten this little nipple thing. Now, 
from the back side, they're not all the way in. I still need to tighten them. And what you wanna do is just hold on, just with your hands, it's fine. And then from the back side, you're gonna start tightening that bolt. A little bit of the bottom, a little bit of the top, a little bit of the bottom, a little bit of the top, until you're completely flush and tight. Now, if you are working with a hollow core door, do not go crazy and tighten these puppies all the way. You'll start hearing your door crack. How do I know this? It's just a trade secret. It doesn't need to be so tight. It's just hand tightened. That's all it is. I'm just looking for on the back side of my door, the bolt to be flush with the door. Don't be tempted. You're gonna wanna go even tighter. You're gonna say, oh, I need pliers to hold this now because I can't hold it with my hand. No, 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 no. Now with a solid door, solid wood door, yeah, get pliers, do it up, tighten it. But hollow core, it's not that serious. This ain't going nowhere. So once you have those good and tight with your hands, you can move on to the other side and then you get to hang your barn door. It's very exciting. Both of our little wheel things are on our door. Getting it on the door was probably the easiest part of this entire project. Now, all I need to do is lift my door up so that my wheel is riding on my track, figure out where I need my brakes, and then tighten them accordingly. And then it's done! Okay, it's up. It's hung. I've cleaned everything. You can kind of see it right there. Are you ready for the final reveal? Because here it comes. Dun, 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 dun. <gasps> it's amazing. I love it so much. Look at that. That little braid just stops it where it needs to stop. This one over here stops it where it needs to stop on this end so it doesn't fly off the track. We are fucking awesome! Okay, so yeah, that's it. The door's amazing, we're amazing, seriously. And I know that maybe this door isn't everybody's style, but I think it is gorgeous. I'm changing a lot of things in this house. I'm making this house my own. I don't wanna change it so much to where it loses the character of what it once was. So what I love about repurposing this door is that in my own little way, I'm paying homage to this house. Is it homage? Homage. I am paying homage to this house. And I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but now that I have a door here, um, I don't have to clean and organize my pantry slash laundry room. I mean, I will. But in reality, this could be the room that when people come over and you're not expecting them, just throw everything in here and shut the damn barn door. Yeah, that's a bonus. In reality though, I cannot keep this barn door closed like this all day, every day because Joe's food and litter box are in this room as well. When I was working on it, Joe came in here and just sat right here and was looking at me because the opening was blocked off. Seriously, you need to get in here now. And he just sat there and was like, yeah lady, I need to pee and I need to drink and I need some food. However, when I'm doing laundry, I can close this to cut down on the noise. When I do have people over, I can close this so they don't see my messy laundry room. Even though, you know, I still need to paint and do wallpaper. A lot of work to still be done in this kitchen. What I do like about this door is that when it is open, it does add some visual interest to this wall. Another thing that you will need to be aware of, I have a piece of furniture, it's right here. I had to pull it away from the wall because when this is opened up all the way, it kind of needs to go behind that piece of furniture. Here's the piece of furniture here. Right here is the gap that I had to leave so that the door could slide just behind it. From the front of the piece, you can't really tell that it's away from the wall ever so slightly, but the door just needs to go just behind it, just a hair. Now that you've seen me do it all by myself, I know you can do it too. And here's the thing on my DIY channels, 
you rarely see anybody helping me with my projects, no matter how intense they are. Believe me, editor John, he was like, oh, I can come help you hang that barn door. And I was like, that's awfully nice of you, but I wanna be able to do it by myself because I don't want any of you guys to feel like you can't do a project because you don't have a helper. And I just showed you that you can install an entire barn door by yourself. Would it have been nice to have a helper? Yeah, it probably would have gone faster. But if you don't have anybody that can help you, don't let that stop you from doing the projects that you want to do. There are ways to work around not having a helper, like those little pieces of board that we nailed up as our extra set of hands. You know, sometimes by yourself, it's a little cumbersome trying to figure out how to hold this with one hand while you're drilling with the other hand, but you make it work. And guess what? In the end, it's fucking amazing. I like to do pretty much every single DIY by myself so that I can show you if I can do it, you 100% can do it. There is nothing terribly hard about installing this barn door. Really, it's reading and understanding the directions and getting your level and your measurements right. That's it. And the only additional tools you will need is that little socket wrench with the right size little nut bolt attachment thing. Drill, drill bits, and a level, and you're good to go. Easy. Easy, easy. You know what would be really cool? You see that door right there has a window in it? Technically, that is an exterior door. The sunroom slash dining room was an add-on to this house before I moved here. This is a door that originally went from like the kitchen to the backyard. Believe you me, it's kind of getting the fuck out of here. But if you could repurpose a door that maybe you find on the side of the road or you have in your garage, like that door with the little window would have also made, a, I was thinking about using it for my bathroom barn door. I know, I kind of should because it's really cute with the little window. Point of the story is you don't have to pay a fortune for a barn door when you can repurpose a door that you, your friend, the street, the junkyard already has because you saw how easy it was. I literally took this pocket door, installed the hardware up at the top, done. What's really cool about this too, this pocket door already has like a little finger pull handle. The door that I used for my bathroom, that was an actual door with a doorknob. So right now it's just a hole where the doorknob used to be. I know that they do make handles that are just like one-sided doorknobs with nothing on the other side but like a plate. So I do need to go get that. But again, anything you find, you can make work. Recycle a door, save yourself some money if you can. Point of story is, you can install a barn door. I just showed you how. So. Do it if you want to. That is it for this DIY Wednesday video. I originally said I installed a barn door so you don't have to because my first go round was kind of a shit show. But in reality, I installed the barn door so now you know how to and you can do it all by yourself. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which is every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Make sure you share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.